Hey guys, so I just saw the new Nancy Drew movie starring Sophia Lillis. If you haven't heard of this movie, don't feel bad. Warner Brothers has made little to no effort to promote it. If you know what the deal is with them barely promoting a major franchise that they own, a movie based on a major franchise that they own, please feel free to post the reasons why in the comment section because I'm very curious as to why they're treating this movie like it's, you know, an independent movie with a limited release. But because this is this is a franchise that I am only a casual fan of, this is an opportunity for me to do something that I've always wanted to do in a video, which is to discuss the movie with somebody who is a hardcore fan. Marsha is the biggest, most devoted Nancy Drew fan that I've ever met in my life. She has one of the most ostentatious collection of Nancy Drew books I've ever seen. One of the first interactions that we ever had um, before we even got together was you gave me an essay that you wrote for me to proofread which was all about Nancy Drew. I don't remember that. Yes, it, it was in college. Um, so um, I figured that uh, in order to give you both um, a filmmaker's perspective and a super fan's perspective. This was a very cool idea. So the way we're going to do this is we are going to first talk about the movie's negatives and then we're going to close it out with the positives because there's a lot of positives here in spite of the lackluster attention that Warner Brothers has given to this movie. Um, so he, here's the, the first thing that a lot of you might notice if you've seen the, the one and only trailer for this movie. And a lot of you have already made this comment to me on Twitter and other social media forums. Um, this movie is like two notches away from being an original Disney Channel movie. Um, there are very few things about it that, you know, stop it from being 100% one of those terrible original Disney Channel movies. Um, but let me ask you as a fan, this is the first thing that I want to know. Um, for Nancy Drew, as a franchise, to tell a Nancy Drew story that is faithful to one of the books, do you prefer that smaller scale setting, or would you want something larger, more bombastic, and more blockbustery um, than uh, what we saw? Um, smaller scale. Yeah? Yeah, I don't think it needs to be a big blockbuster budget and anything crazy like that, because the books themselves, the mysteries are always very simple and, and intelligent in their simplicity. So I think the movie should be that way too. Another big issue that we talked about at length is how the opening scene of this movie is just awful. It's like your goofy Nickelodeon bullshit opening scene. It does a good job of establishing Nancy and it's a good idea. It's Nancy standing up for one of her friends, specifically for Bess. Uh, but it, it doesn't fit the movie. It doesn't fit the, the tone of the rest of the movie. It's just goofy slapstick stupidity. Um, as a fan, can you bring yourself to forgive that opener? Or do you wish you could just go in and George Lucas it and fix it? I feel like that scene may have been the biggest part that wasn't either consulted or written mm -hmm. by a fan. Mm -hmm. Because all the Nancy Drew books, even if you, no matter where you pick up, they establish Nancy's character as this person that fights for justice and this person that's selfless very quickly in any book you pick up. And they don't do it by having her do any silly shenanigans or any of that kind of stuff. They just manage to establish it by having someone in trouble and her going to help them. They didn't even have to establish that in the beginning. They could have established it when the mystery got started, mm -hmm. which is typically how it comes to pass. You know, in the later book, she does say, you know, I've solved mysteries before and that kind of stuff to kind of catch the reader up. But it, this was supposed to be her first case. So I get why they felt they had to do it, but they could have just established that through just writing of the character better. And of course, like any True Blue fangirl, um, you were very adamant to point out, like, every single difference, every time they veered off the path, of the canon of the the, the series, um, it's like every time I could feel it, I could feel the radiation next to me <laughs> as I was watching the movie. Every time they changed anything, um, 
whether or not I was familiar with it, I knew that you weren't happy with them changing, just changing anything about Nancy Drew. Now, I'm going to give you the opportunity to name three. Three. Just three, because I know you have 167. Because um, well, obviously they took their liberties either. as they do with every movie. Um, you know, like Tim Burton's Batman, the Joker ki kills Batman's parents. You know, that's okay, well, a huge which, major liberty. Which three gets me the most and can do those? Um, Number one. Okay, hold on. so just before I lead into that, throughout the entire movie, I felt like maybe I had become a judge mm -hmm. because that would happen and I would think, I'll allow it. Keep going. Okay, I'll allow it. And I just kind of kept going with the flow with it. But I think one of the biggest things, and I guess I kind of see why they did it, is um, the, the book is based upon book number two. And Bess and George weren't there until I think book three. Mm -hmm. And in the first few books, her best friend, Helen, is there. And they changed that character as well. Um, and that kind of bothered me a bit, but it worked out, you know, fine in the end. Um, number two, I guess, would say making Hannah Gruen her aunt. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, that was a, there's some, one of those unnecessary, to me, unnecessary changes because... Um, Nancy's mother died when she was a baby, and Hannah's the only maternal figure she's ever known. But it's not very common for people to have a maid nowadays, especially blue-collar people. Well, so, I mean... I mean, compromise? They changed it to the aunt instead of the, the governess or whatever the heck But in the world, of, is the in the world of the books, it's even stated in a few of them that the family doesn't view Hannah like the maid. Like, mm -hmm. she started out that way, but now she's more like a live-in family member. You know, so... All right. You get one more. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> one more, because I know you got a lot. <laughs> okay. Um, and I guess the other one would probably have to be that they made... They claimed that The Hidden Staircase is her first case, mm. but that's actually book number two. Um, the first book is The Secret of the Old Clock, which establishes um, Nancy turning 16, getting um, her roadster, solving her first case, and at the end of The Secret of the Old Clock, she gets the clock in question. Um, and that's always kind of referenced, and it's a reminder of that first case that turned her into the Nancy Drew we know from books later on. And I don't know why they felt the need to skip, skip Secret of the Old Clock and go straight to The Hidden Staircase. That really kind of bothers me. They made hints at Lilac End at the end, which would be book number three in the series, in the original series. Which, that would be cool, that's one of my favorite of the first few, but I'm kind of wondering why they felt the need to skip Secret of the Old Clock. Um, I thought it was because maybe they wanted to open up the possibilities to a prequel, you know, using what they established in this movie, and then show you how she became all the things that you automatically see in this one. That was just... My, what I got from watching it, how, how many things they were establishing, but you're the fan, so if this is a big point of contention... Wait, I only get three. Can I have four? <laughs> oh, my God. Please, just four. Oh, my God. Four. Okay, four. one more. Okay. What's, what's the last right. one? Um, this is your last one. Okay. Make it good. Unless we're going to talk about it later. I don't actually know if we're going to talk about it later. Well, l l tell you what. If we get to the end of the video and we don't talk about it, you can say okay. it. You can say it, and you know, and they won't care. I was just trying to keep the video at, <coughs> at, at a decent length. Um, all right, so this is the final negative that we're going to talk about, and I think it's a, a good final negative because it'll lead into the positives. Okay. All right, um, something that surprised me because I kind of disagree, but you're the expert, so I don't feel like fighting you on it. But I was very surprised when you said that this mystery movie didn't have enough sleuthing in it. Mm -hmm. um, it just, to me, it didn't. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't really contacted any of the other sleuths to really get their idea but um, on what they thought, but it just needed something else, like another scene of her trying to solve the mystery of the, the house. Mm -hmm. um, because, I mean, I, I know like it's a book that you can get into more detail and stuff like that. I understand that this is a movie with limited time, but she goes to the house, she's there one day, and she's already figured out what's causing it. I think that there needed to be something in between there. Either in between the ending and the reveal, or within the, the movie itself with the sleuthing. There just needed to be more sleuthing. 
involved mm. more. The mystery just felt like it took a back seat to me. Now, that I agree with, um, that it took the back seat, but here's the reason why that doesn't bother me. Um, is because this being like the, the opener for a potential franchise, the, the quote-unquote pilot episode, it's more important to establish the characters and what they do. And the mystery itself opened uh, the movie to many possibilities to showcase what Nancy can do. I mean, from the very beginning, you're constantly getting um, lots and lots and lots of moments of her using her intellect and her knowledge, um, her ability to notice what nobody else notices, um, and that happened a lot. So um, it's the equivalent of you know Spider-Man using his web. You want to see him do that a lot throughout the movie. You don't want to see him do it once or twice throughout the film. So. To me, that's the reason why I can forgive that, because it was more important to establish Nancy and her universe and her characters. So I can see why um, the mystery would take a backseat to that. Um, and as you just said, the movie has like a 90 minute time limit for whatever reason. It's just 100% standard three act movie. They don't have a lot of time. You know, a book, on the other hand, has can be as long as it wants to be. Um, so they really have to manage their time. And I think they did so efficiently, except for that opening scene, because it sucked. Yeah, I feel like the opening uh, scene went It could have been long. anything else. They could have shortened that or changed it and have more time to focus on the mystery. So going into the positives, and another major reason why I can forgive the lack of sleuthing is because as far as I'm concerned, the best part of the movie is Sophia Lillis as Nancy Drew. She is the number one thing, as far as I'm concerned, that stops this from being a shitty original Disney Channel movie. Because, you know, she's not your average, like, kid actor, TV star. This girl is, is destined to be a movie star. She, she is definitely a, a leading lady. Um, and uh, I like, was thinking about it today, you know, she's like, a, like they cloned Molly Ringwald, they made like a young Molly Ringwald, and they somehow gave her like Will Smith's charisma. Mm. It's like her charisma points are like through the roof. Um, so that was a big part of the reason why I could forgive the character development taking the forefront and the mystery kind of taking the back seat because I was completely... Um, captivated by her. She was such a great lead. She was so funny. I could uh, one of her scenes would end and they would go to like some some other character doing something. I couldn't wait for Nancy to be back on the screen. So does that compensate for the fact for the lack of sleuthing or not? Um, well she um her, she does really good with what she's given. Um I really hate how Nancy lost her femininity. Mm. Um, in this, Nancy's supposed to be very feminine, feminine, and that was a negative that I probably should have talked about earlier. But um, despite that, she does portray the character very, very well. Um, I think probably we kind of talked about this. Um, they might have adjusted some stuff to fit her style more. Mm -hmm. So I think that because Nancy was so strong, I can forgive having a weaker mystery, mm -hmm. even though I think that they could have potentially found a way to look at some type of paper that has words written on it <laughs> to help them flush out the mystery a little bit better. Um, but, yeah, I think that it will compensate. That's why I was the judge saying, I'll allow it, I'll allow it, because she was so good uh, to look at on screen. And her charisma with Bess and George and Helen and Aunt Flora was really good. Um, so... Um. Did you see the, the whole changing Nancy and making her into a tomboy as like a really transparent attempt at making her tougher and more appealing? Mm -hmm. And that, that's why um, I've never actually had a trailer keep me up at night before. <laughs> I couldn't sleep after I saw it. I was really upset. Um, I, it took a lot to try to get myself excited about this movie because of the way the trailer made her come off and she did come off in the movie like skateboarder. She looks like she's stuck in the 1990s. Yeah. I, I don't know why. She's totally radical. Yeah. She's extreme. Um, a tomboy. Okay, fine. I, I get why, but to, Nancy is tough, but she's not tough in the, the way that George is tough. 
You know, George is the one that's the tomboy and the tough one. Bess is the beautiful one who's very vain and a little chubby and, and, and everything. And then Nancy is right in the middle. Mm -hmm. You have George as these characters that are your audience surrogates. Right. And Nancy's just right there. She's a little bit feminine, a little bit tough physically, but she's tough mentally. That's where she's tough. It's not riding a skateboard or being a bro. The, the ripped jeans, yeah. She's, whatever. She's a total bro. So <laughs> that aspect <laughs> felt like a really desperate attempt at trying to, you know, put even the song in the in the first scene, I'm Not Just a Girl, mm -hmm. you know, it's like they were trying to really show hard. you instead of, t you know, sh tell you instead of, like, show you. You know, because when you write something, you don't want to beat your audience over the head with it. You want to do subtle. You want to put it in there within the character and wrap it up in a package. You don't want to have to say, I'm tough, look at me, I'm riding a skateboard. And that's where I think that um, it kind of fell. But that's not on Sophia, that's on right, right. the writing itself. Correct. Uh, so I personally thought that the entire cast of this movie was excellent. Mm -hmm. But I don't know the characters as well as you do. It, it's the, if was there anyone, be it because of the performance or because of the writing, that you felt could have been way better? And again, this is going to be my nitpickiness, but um, Bess and George are supposed to be cousins. Mm -hmm. I don't even think they address that in, in the movie. Um, like I said, Bess's character is portrayed. Uh, they just made her a geek. They made her the brains, the science person. This isn't the Flash. We don't need a brain person and then. The oh, at least person. she wasn't sitting at the computer. It's like go to the left door, go to the right. Yeah. Run, so, Barry, run. <laughs> so I get that they were trying to give the characters a purpose, but the characters already technically have a purpose. Um, but I, I can I can forgive it because they wanted to. Um, really push home the fact that Nancy relies on these two people, um, and. To build this like new future or whatever they're going to be doing with new uh, future movies and stuff. Maybe. Hopefully. Um, but that was the only thing that kind of took me aback. Um, George seemed to be pretty much on point. Carson seemed to be pretty much on point. Okay. Um, Helen um, was. Helen's not, um, from what I remember of her in the books, she's not exactly the most 3D, uh, three dimensional character. Because they kind of turned her into Cher from Clueless. Yeah, yeah. So we have a I lot don't know of, why that lot happened. Of 90s, a lot of 90s. A lot of 90s. A lot of 90s. Somebody exactly really loved the 90s. Um, well, it was executive producer was Ellen DeGeneres, and she had you know she was you know had a huge sitcom in the 90s. Again, that's it. That, she, she doesn't she doesn't really know. have <laughs> one hundred percent control of everything that happens in the movie. She know. gave the money. She she does have final say, but she doesn't like you know, hover over the director and the writer and everybody. These are aesthetic choices that the filmmakers yeah, made. So I, I don't and know, again, I can't explain them to I you. I don't know, but for the most part, um, all the actors, all the characters are really, really good, even if they differ from how they are in the books. Um, but yeah, they, they made Helen kind of like <laughs> share uh, from yeah. that's a good that's a good analogy and Nancy's like Tony Hawk fucked Kurt Cobain it's like that's like totally radical 90s really character happy. they made a beautiful baby together but it was it's so odd yeah. it's like I, I it's if it wasn't for Sophia's performance I would constantly forget that I was watching a Nancy Drew movie mm -hmm. um, all right so here's a really bold statement that you made that I want to finish off the, the positives with and go into our final segment to close this out. Um, as far as all the Nancy Drew adaptations, how close is this to properly adapting one of the books? This is the best book adaptation there has been. The mystery within this movie, even though they changed some stuff, if you want to know, just read the book, um, original text or revised, pick, pick one. Overall, that is the mystery. Mm -hmm. um, in the book, you have Aunt Flora and Rosemary. They're living in a house. They think the house is haunted. They can't leave the home for reasons that are ridiculous to explain. And Nancy comes in to help them figure out what's going on. And it's very similar to what occurred in this film. So you said that this was the best adapted Nancy Drew story, but still not the best Nancy, even though you no. liked... Sophia, so we're going to close this out. We're doing something very special. I've seen hundreds of videos on YouTube where people rank all the best Bonds, like who's the best, best to worst Bond. Sean Connery. 
<laughs> Best to worst Batman, Kevin Conroy. Um, so we're going to do something that, that should have been done ages ago. Um, we're going to rank all the Nancys. Okay? For now, because there's a show coming. So. There, there's a show on the CW. We're going to talk about that too, because I want to get your first perspective on both. Okay. Um, since all of a sudden there's a Nancy Drew boom. Um, it's all those letters I wrote. So thus far, there are six actors who have played Nancy Drew, and they are as follows. Uh, from the 1930s, from the Warner Brothers movies, Benita Granville. Then in the 1970s Hardy Boys TV show, we had Pamela Sue Martin. The 90s TV show was Tracy Ryan. In 2002, there was a made-for-TV movie that aired on ABC with Maggie Lawson as Nancy. Then, of course, you guys know in 2007, that was the, the last movie with Emma Roberts. And, of course, Sophia Lillis. So, here we go. One through six. Let's start in, in from the first one to the last one. Benita Granville, the OG Nancy Drew, the first one to go sleuthing. Question, do I give my reasons as to why or I just... Of course, why not? Okay. Um, so where do you rank from one to six, where do you rank Benita Granville? Number one. So the one is still, the first one is still the best? To me, to me, that's my personal preference. But the reason for it, in my opinion, is at the time, because oh, now we have so many different variations of Nancy Drew. Um, at the time, the books there wasn't that many, and there was like just the original text with the original Nancy, and it was very like similar to the way the Harry Potter movies came out. You know, maybe in eighty years there'll be other incarnations of him in the book world, mm -hmm. but for now we just have the regular Harry Potter, so it's really easy to follow, put it together. So even though it's not at all like the, the, the a lot of stuff is not right from the books, her portrayal to me like whenever I think of Nancy Drew. Uh, in movies, mm -hmm. I think of Benita Granville, mm -hmm. and plus it, it takes place in that same era of the original books, mm -hmm. so it just feels more genuine, and she's just, you know, I really rambunctious saying. and stuff. Like when I, uh, you know, you could argue that Benedict Cumberbatch is superior Sherlock Holmes, but when I think of Sherlock Holmes, the first guy that comes to mind is Bas Basil Rathbone, like the one from the original movies. Okay, so that's cool. Yeah. All right, let's get in our DeLorean and travel all the way to the freaking 70s. Mm -hmm. It's so long. It took so long to get another Nancy Drew adaptation. Um, Hardy Boys and Nancy Drew Mysteries, mostly known as the Hardy Boy Mysteries, uh, their trusty sidekick, Nancy Drew, played by <laughs> Pamela Sue Martin. From uh, two to six, where do you rank Pamela Sue Martin? I'm going to get a lot of hate mail. Uh, probably from the Nancy Drew controversy um, because I know some people love her. I mean, that's the era where they mm -hmm. discovered it. A lot of people, Drew. a lot of people, that was the first Nancy. Uh, they saw. That was the first Nancy, so they. That love was her, the but, that's the one my mom knows. Um, I gotta put her down as number five. Five, okay. I gotta okay. put her down as number it's five. Not six, and okay. maybe that's harsh because I have a hard time watching the show. And this has nothing to do with her appearance in a certain nope. magazine um, that we only read for the articles. I am. No? Deleting all that? That didn't happen? I don't know what you're talking about. She's replacing reality with her own. Maybe, she, I think it was maybe Life Magazine or... It's or Life Magazine. Forbes, okay, hey, Forbes, you're, you're, you're the expert. Maybe, I'm just, maybe I'm just, I just ask the questions. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I don't, I'm not familiar with that. But um, I guess it's probably because of when that show hit the air. Um, if that show would have been something that wasn't so disco, I don't know how any other way to put it, I probably would have enjoyed it more. And this is, you know, I know we're supposed to, I'm supposed to be judging her performance and stuff, mm -hmm. um, but I just mm -hmm. never really bought her as Nancy. I guess the biggest reason is because of all the Nancys on this list. She looks like she's 40. Oh, well, that was the thing. <laughs> and I know yeah. that that was the thing back then. Yeah. Um, I probably could have put her a little bit lower, but... Um, yeah. Twenty somethings playing teenagers, and that went on through the nineties. So. She just looked way too too old. I mean, so, I, you know. On the subject of the nineties, let's again get in our. This time, let's jump on the 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 TARDIS. Mm -hmm. It goes faster. Mm -hmm. um, let's go to the nineties. Let's talk about the Canadian produced, very CW, right in Vancouver. Canadian produced. Nobody's Canadian in the show, even though they have the worst Canadian <laughs> accents. Nineties uh, Nancy Drew. Tracy Ryan, my personal favorite. Um, yeah, I would have to say she's probably going to have to be uh, number two. Ooh, okay. Because, um, oh, now, to be fair, um, the era whenever I got into Nancy Drew, I actually didn't become a fan because of the original books. 
Um, I think my mom gave me one one time when I was like seven, and I was like, I don't understand what it's saying because it's you know very dated, even the revised text. So. Whenever I became a fan, I actually became a fan of the Digest series that were produced in the 80s and the Case Files series that were produced in the 80s, which was more something that I could relate to and understand the dialogue and stuff. And I thought that Tracy Ryan, and I could even show you, I have some copies of books where they replaced Nancy Drew with Tracy Ryan on the cover. Right. And, I've, I saw that on and, Amazon. Yeah. And so um, I felt like for that particular era, when... I see her in that show, you know, it was very short and everything, but she's what I could picture. You know, she didn't have the right physical attributes as far as, you know, the right color hair and all that kind of stuff, which is just nitpicky stuff. But other than that, she was Nancy, so um, number two, I would say. Okay. Number two. Uh, so, she, she um, right there behind Bonita for, the, okay. for that reason, matching up um, with the era with the book. So, 2002, we first get together. Mm -hmm. Um... And to 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 christen our union, boom! Uh, made for TV Nancy <laughs> Drew movie that you had to watch. It was one of the, I remember it was one of the first things that you were like, "I'm recording this." And I'm like, "Okay, <laughs> you can have the TV uh, with Maggie Lawson." Nancy is grown up now; she's in college. How do you rank Maggie? Um, to be fair, I mean it was only one made for TV movie, but I gotta put her at number six. It was good casting. She's she's good, very good actress. There's yeah, I nothing agree. Nothing against her. Uh, she just seemed to be a little too old, but I get that they were putting Nancy in college, which they done a Nancy Drew on campus series. It was more like a romantic series. And this has nothing to do with her, but I just, I felt like the movie was so uneventful. Mm -hmm. Like, there's no murder, there's nothing stolen. It's like, it really lame, like somebody's cheating at the test. Or, it's really lame yeah, college I, mystery. And I barely remember and, it, to be honest. And I know that's you. not what we're talking about, but the reason I bring it up is because that in itself, they didn't really showcase Nancy very well. Yeah. And so, again, that was not her fault, but that's why she's got to be at number six. All right, but, but I, I thought... Under different circumstances, she would have been a magnificent mm -hmm. Nancy. I, I think she would have been, yeah. All right, so 2007, you know, big profile. They they advertise this movie on Nickelodeon every hour on the hour. Mm -hmm. um, Eric Roberts was promoting it. Mm -hmm. uh, Bruce Willis was promoting it. I mean, there was... Nancy Drew movie, they got promotion? Yeah, yeah. Nancy Drew movie that got promotion. Go figure. Like, we thought this was it. This was the beginning of, like... Nancy Drew getting into like a major like social consciousness and the woman at the head of the franchise, Emma Roberts, how do you rank her? Um, number four. She did great um, at playing what, um, very similar to Sophia, she did a great job of playing what they wrote for her mm -hmm. as far as Nancy. Um, I think that had a few writing things happen differently, she would be higher on the list. Mm -hmm. Um, but, you know, a little too young, um, to oh. at that time. Um, I know she was probably supposed to be 16 at least, but she just came off as being 13 or 14 to me mm. for some reason. Um, like she should be in middle school or something or start, just starting high school. Just okay. So four. Sophia Lillis at number three. Mm -hmm. So what makes her superior to Emma Roberts, but inferior to Tracy <laughs> Ryan and, and Bonita Granville? Um, well, uh, none of it's really her fault, but what makes her um, superior to Emma Roberts is, like you said, her charisma, um, being committed to that character, being committed to um, this character that um, wants to fight for justice and help out the, help the helpless, basically, is um, one of the biggest character traits that Nancy Drew has. It's basically her defining character. She has to get involved. And, yes, yeah, she has to get involved. She has to use her powers of... Um, deduction, deduction, yeah, or um, and, cl and cleverness too, mm -hmm. not just being able to deduce, but uh, she has to use all that to help people, no matter what it's going to cost her. You know, getting in trouble with the law, breaking in the ring, getting in trouble with her dad. She's always done that, um, but she still can't beat our two faves. How come? Okay. Um, it's not her fault at all, but a lot of it is what I said earlier about she had no f femininity. Mm. Because the thing about Nancy Drew is you can be smart, you can be tough, you can help the helpless, you can be selfless and look good doing it. <laughs> and she just didn't have anything about her that was feminine. 
Mm -hmm. And I just need a there's little even, bit of There's even there. like a little like epilogue speech right before the credits roll where she kind of jokingly like mocks at the I mocks the idea of maybe I'll start doing all these feminine things and I'll do my nails and I was like just kidding wink at the camera and it yeah. felt like a stab as like if you do these things you're you're just silly you're just a silly girl yeah and that's the that's the biggest thing I know it may seem like a really small detail no it's not it's um, not a small detail but to me that's why um I, I wanted to be like Nancy whenever I was a kid because I didn't ever put on makeup and I didn't want to talk to people until I started reading Nancy Drew because I saw this character that I could never be as good as. I could never be as smart as her. I knew but that you was never going to be. But I could try. And she was described in the books of, you know, oh, I need to go chase down the bad guy. But you know what? Before I go follow this next lead, let me fix my hair and my makeup real quick. <laughs> and, you know, and to try but to... I I agree. There's no reason why you can't be both. You know, Buffy, Veronica Mars, all mm -hmm. characters that are both. Yeah. Um, or all those things at once. There's no reason. And that was the big takeaway that I got from the trailer. It's like this is their cheap, lazy way of transmitting to the audience as quickly as possible that she's tough. We made her more like a boy to make her tough. Um, when I agree, I've seen all these iterations of Nancy Drew with you, and I've never saw that. That was never a necessity. Yeah, um, if they would have, to be quite honest with you, because if you look at Benita Granville's portrayal, and then you look at Tracy um, Ryan's portrayal, they're both very feminine in the way they handle things and the way they hold, hold themselves, right. carry themselves. They're, right. they're both very feminine. I promise you that had they... And for me, in my opinion, if they would have made Sophia's character more feminine, along with all the other wonderful things they did with the character, I'd be like, bye-bye, Benita, you're number two. Wow. I guarantee you that would wow. have been the case. But I just want to say, um, if you, this is going to have a very, very limited run. Um, if it's playing near you, it's a good family movie. It's a good friend, kid-friendly movie. With a really good message about tolerance and standing up for people who are being bullied or abused. Right. Um, so if you want to see a movie that is, for the most part, faithful to um, one of the books, take your kids, take your nieces, nephews, grandkids, take yourself. Because it is a fun movie. In spite of its flaws, it is, it is a lot of it, fun. It is a lot of fun. Um, it doesn't take any sidetracks from the story to be stupid or, or anything like that. Good role model. Yeah, very, very good. So... While it's out in theaters, if it is happens to be playing near you, please go see it. You know, check out a matinee or something because the more people that actually go see this movie, the more potential we'll get for a sequel to this. And maybe we can see the mystery of the lot again, or maybe they'll go back and do Secret of the Old Clock. All right. So thank you so much, guys, for watching. Um, for Marsha and I, um, we appreciate your viewership and your ongoing support because I could not do what I do without you.